Hello and welcome to Derive. If you're new to the Derive editor, this beginner's guide will help you get started. In this video, we will cover the basic features of the editor. First off, what is Derive? Derive is essentially a node-based texture editor for Unity that comes with all tools required to create photorealistic surface textures either from existing photography or from scratch. It's aimed primarily at artists and can create both realistic and stylized textures. The output is standardized to work with common surface shaders that handle one or more of the following maps albedo or diffuse maps, normal maps, height maps, ambient occlusion maps and specular maps. The results can be used both inside and outside of Unity with any shader that sticks to the common composition of color channels for each map. Custom compositions for custom shaders are also possible, but that is something we will cover in another video. So let's get started. We will start by introducing the views, what they do and how to navigate them. After that, we will start building up a project by adding some nodes to the canvas and see how everything plays together. During the course of this guide, we will create a simple leather texture and in the last step we will export the final result. Please keep in mind that this guide does not replace the documentation. If you need more in-depth information on the editor or on specific nodes, you can look it up in the online manual and the node reference. Once Derive is imported, a folder called Dogmatic appears in the project view in Unity. Derive is in a subfolder. Before we can use the editor, we need to create a project file. There are several ways to do that. The one I prefer is to simply right click into the project view in Unity, go to Create and select Derive Project. The project file appears and can always be identified by its file icon. Double clicking it will open it in the Derive editor. This is what a new project should look like in Derive. The editor is organized in four views. The node canvas in the center is where we will spend most of the time editing our project. The property view on the left side shows us the project settings and the export settings when nothing is selected in the canvas. If an individual node is selected, the property view will display the settings for that particular node instead. Then we have the preview area in the top right corner where we get a live preview of our output and the resource area in the bottom right corner where we can access useful resources and share our work with other users. Since we won't be working in all areas at the same time, we can resize them to focus on the view we are currently working in. All views can be expanded and collapsed, moving the mouse while holding down the left mouse button on their resize icons. Let's start with the canvas. Every project has a master node by default. This node is always required and cannot be deleted. It has input connectors for the final result of each individual map and passes the data to the live preview so we can review it. We can select individual nodes by left clicking them. To move a node, simply drag it along the canvas holding down the left mouse button. To pan the view, hold down the right or the middle mouse button and move the mouse. We can also zoom in and out using the scroll wheel. Let's add another node. To do this, we right click somewhere on the canvas. This will open up the node menu that shows us the available node categories. Click the small triangle next to a category to expand it and see the available nodes. I will first add a Voronoi node which is located in the Generators category. This will add the node to the canvas. We can see that the Voronoi node has an output connector but no input connector. This is because the node generates an output without requiring an input. In this case it's a random Voronoi texture. When the node is selected we can see its properties in the property view. At the top we always see the node type and a preview of the output it produces. Let's have a look at the other settings. The texture is generated by a seed that we can randomize. Changing any of these parameters will change the output of the node instantly. I will only adjust the scale for now. I will not go through all the available parameters, so if you want to learn more about them, you can simply look up the documentation. To open the documentation of a particular node, you can simply hover the mouse cursor over the node's header. This will display a tooltip with a link to the online reference. Click that link to open the documentation in your web browser. If we deselect the node, the property view will once again display the project and export settings. If you need to see a node's current output without having to look up the properties, you can simply click the small triangle at the bottom of the node. This will expand a small card showing a preview of its output. 
Clicking the triangle again will collapse the card. It's time to add another node. This time we will do it a bit differently. Since we already have a node that we want to connect, we can simply start by drawing an open connection. To do that, click and hold down the left mouse button on the node's output connector and move the mouse. When you release the mouse button, the node menu will again open up and the connection will be awaiting another node to be added. I want to add a node that maps the output of the Voronoi node seamlessly. If you already know the name of the node you want to add, you don't have to look through the categories to find it, you can instead use the search bar at the top. If I start typing the name of the node I'm looking for, the menu will automatically filter matching nodes. Click on the node to add it to the canvas. We can see that the node is now not only on the canvas, it already has been connected to the output of our Voronoi node. It's not required to do it that way, but it's certainly convenient. Selecting multiple nodes is quite straightforward. We can either draw a box around them using the left mouse button, or we can control select individual nodes to add them to or remove them from our selection. When multiple nodes are selected, we can move them all at once together with their connections. Nodes can also be copied and pasted together with their connections. If we want to do that, we select the nodes that we want to copy and press Ctrl C. If we now press Ctrl and V, the copied nodes are pasted at the location of our mouse cursor. Pasted nodes have the same properties as their originals, but they don't keep it. If you make changes to the original node or the copy, these changes will not propagate to their counterparts. If we want to remove a connection, we can simply left click on the input of the node it connects to and move the connection away from it. When we release the mouse button, the connection disappears if it doesn't connect to anything. If the connection leads to a valid connector as you release the mouse button, the node menu will not open. Instead, the connection is established instantly. To delete nodes, select one or more nodes you want to delete and press the delete key on your keyboard. This will remove the nodes from the canvas. So now that we know how to work with nodes, it's time to add some more. Currently we have two nodes. The purpose of the seamless mapping node is obviously so we can tile the texture seamlessly. The Voronoi texture will act as a height map for our leather texture and from the height map we can generate both a normal map and an ambient occlusion map. To do that, let's add two more nodes. One is called normals from height and the other one is called AO or ambient occlusion from height. Connect them to our seamless mapping node and now all we need to do is adjust the node's parameters. Again, I will not go through all the parameters in this video, you can look them up in the node reference. For now, you can just follow along and simply do as I do. We now have an output for the normal map, the height map and the ambient occlusion map. But of course we still need an albedo for our texture. In case of leather, a uniform color will do just fine. So we add a color node and specify the desired color in the node settings. Some nodes have their main setting right on the node body and we can set it from there if we want to. We don't yet have an output for the specular map, but we will get to that later. Right now we can work with what we have. Let's connect our outputs for the individual maps to the master node. The color to the albedo input, the normal map to the normal map input, the height map and the ambient occlusion map to their corresponding inputs and we are ready to preview our work. If we find that a connection is obfuscated by another node, we can simply reroute it. To do that, we can add a relay by double clicking somewhere on the connection. We can drag the relay to reroute the connection. Double click the relay to remove it if we don't need it. Deleting a connection will also delete all relays that it may have. There is no need to save your project at any point. Derive does it automatically as you go, so you can close the editor if you wish to stop working and resume right where you left off when reopening the project. Let's expand the preview area. First, we can choose whether we want to see our output mapped on a 3D object or see the maps individually. When we look at the individual maps, we see them as they are connected to the master node's input connectors. This is the data as it would be exported if we were to export now. When we select the 3D preview, our maps are rendered on a 3D object using one of four available shaders that we can choose from. 
These traders are the Unity standard trader with a specular setup, derives parallax occlusion mapping shader that is selected by default, derives tessellation shader that features physical vertex displacement, and a lightweight mobile shader. With the exception of the mobile shader that also features parallax occlusion mapping, all shaders render based on the PBR lighting model, while the mobile shader uses the more simplistic Blin Fong lighting model. When we select a shader, we see all the available shader properties beneath. Changing them will change how the preview object is rendered. By default, the preview model in any new project is a plane. You can choose from a variety of built-in preview models or select custom to render and preview the output on one of your own models. Since we are making a leather texture, let's select a cloth model to render our texture on. Another important preview setting is the lighting. We can choose between a setup with a directional light only or an advanced setup that also uses environment lighting. For now, we will use the latter. Before we can adjust the shader properties, let's have a look at how to navigate the preview. First, let's collapse the preview settings by clicking this small triangle so we have a better look at our model. To rotate the model, hold down the left mouse button while the cursor is inside the preview window and move it. To move the camera, do the same with the right mouse button. And to rotate the light, you can do the same with the middle mouse button. The little flashlight on the bottom right indicates the current light direction. Use a scroll wheel to zoom in and out if you want to focus on details. Now that we know how to navigate the preview, it's time to adjust the shader properties and see the result our output is capable of producing. Expand the preview settings by clicking the small triangle again. By the way, you can always reset the transforms of the preview camera, the light and the preview object by clicking this button that says Reset Transforms. Now on to the shader settings. We will work with Derive's Parallax Occlusion Mapping Shader for now. We can see that our preview object already has the color that we connected to the albedo input of the master node. Now let's adjust the normal strength, the glossiness, the displacement given by the height map and the ambient occlusion. While we do this, we can navigate the preview to get a better look of our result. If we see that adjusting a setting does not improve the look of our preview object, the issue is likely rooted in the way our node tree is built. In that case, we have to go back and edit it until it outputs the desired result. The specularity is a more special topic since not all shaders treat it the same. Derive shaders let you choose whether you want to use uniform specularity, if you do, you don't need to connect anything to the master node specular map input. However, this is only useful when your texture is evenly glossy. If it's not, it has to read the specularity information from the specular map's alpha channel. Since our leather texture has uniform specularity, we don't need to care about a specular map for now. The nuts and bolts of specularity and how to set it up with Unity standard shader will be covered in a separate tutorial. Now that we are happy with the preview, we are ready to export our texture. But before we do that, just for the sake of completeness, let's have a look at the last view we haven't covered yet, the resource area. Here we get access to useful resources and news. You can also showcase your work on social media or submit it to the Derive Content Gallery to make it accessible to other users under certain restrictions you can choose. To make things easier, you can one-click capture a screenshot of your current preview for showcasing. The screenshot will be saved in Full HD resolution and only contain what is rendered in the preview, without showing the settings or anything else from the editor. Apart from that, you can also see the resource packages that are currently available for download. All resource packages are free and contain collections of patterns, hype maps and albedo textures. Once imported, those resources will appear in the available resources from where you can drag and drop them directly on the node canvas. Details on that will be covered in a separate video. Another resource we have access to from the resource area is the documentation. That includes the manual, the node reference and the video tutorials. And if you need any assistance, you can access various resources from the help and support tab from where you can get to Derive's Unity forum thread derives own community forum, an FAQ, an issue tracker and a contact form. To make things easier, you can one-click capture a screenshot of the editor as you see it to use when posting on the forum or submitting a support request. 
Now let's go and export our texture. Make sure you don't have an individual node selected so we can see the project and export settings. At the very top we can choose between two resolutions. One is for the editor, the other one is for the exported textures. The editor resolution tells Derive what resolution it should use internally while editing. The higher this resolution becomes, the higher the quality of your preview image becomes. However, this will also severely impact the editor's performance because it handles much larger amounts of data. For instance, using a resolution of 2048 by 2048 pixel for the editor, the workload and memory usage will be 16 times higher than with a 512 by 512 resolution. Considering that all data generated by the editor is uncompressed, increasing the resolution for large node trees can lead to absurdly high amounts of data that have to be processed by both the CPU and the GPU. Personally, I only increase this resolution if I want to see something specific in the preview and then revert back to 512 by 512 before I continue editing. But if you have a super powerful machine with lots and lots of memory, you can of course also edit at higher resolutions. The other resolution we can select has no impact on our editing process. This is the resolution at which the final output will be exported. The higher this resolution, the more memory is required for the export and the longer your machine will be busy. Next we select the maps we want to export. I will not go through all the pros and cons of each format, but you should know at the bare minimum which of the maps have data stored in their alpha channels. JPEG and bitmap are formats that only have red, green and blue channels but no alpha channel. If you export a map that has data stored in its alpha channel using one of these formats, the data from the alpha channel will be lost in the exported file. Best practice is typically to use the same format for all maps, but if you feel like optimizing file size, you can choose different formats for different maps. If we check the box for creating sample materials, Derive will create four ready-to-use materials when exporting, one with each of the shaders available in the preview. Those materials will already have the textures in place and have the same settings that you specified in the preview. Next, let's give the output a name. The default name will be the same as the project name. Let's name it PBR Leather. Last but not least, select the folder where you want the output to go. Derive will create a folder at the location with the textures inside and a subfolder with the materials. Finally, let's click export and see what happens. So after exporting is complete, we can close the Derive editor and go back to Unity. We can see that Derive has created a folder. When we open it, we can see our texture with all of its maps and a subfolder with the materials. Let's test it. I will add a plane to the scene and simply drop the parallax occlusion mapping material on it, which is a shader we used in the preview. As we can see, the result is quite the same we got in the editor. Since we export it at a resolution different from the one we used in the editor, and since the lighting of our scene might also not be the same as in the editor, we may have to adjust the material settings to get the desired look. But at this point, we have created our first usable texture while learning the basics of how to use Derive. Congrats! And that is it for this beginner's guide, thanks for watching, and there are more tutorials where we dive into more specific practices and examples to create awesome looking surfaces, so if you like, check them out and see you there.